ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> you know, I'm really working on not looking at the monitor when the camera comes on, because I got to see when I kind of start looking to the camera. But hey, street talk and other stuff. Nice to have you here on this great Monday morning. Uh, first Monday in September. Well, summer's not quite over. We still got a little bit left. Um, but school started. I hope all you moms and dads are finally glad that your rugrats are out of your hair for a while. Not that you don't love them, because I know you do. But, you know, it's kind of funny going through Facebook and looking at all the people posting pictures of all their kids. First day of school, black kind of stuff. I haven't done that for a while. It's kind of nice. I see my grandkids, but, you know, they're not so much my problem. But, hey, nice to have you. i got a good sh <laughs> going to have a good show today. But just a couple of things. You know, I mean, I mean one night... There was a, a guy I arrested for, for mugging, and this is what he told me. He, 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 was, uh, he, he, was, he held up this guy, and as, you know, he said to him, hey, give me, give me all your money. And the guy says, hey, you, you can't take my money. I'm a politician. So the mugger said to him, well, then give me my money. Okay, and uh, three boys were walking through the woods one day, and they came across a pond. And in the pond, they saw that Bill Clinton was drowning. So they jumped in, the three of them, and they, they, they hauled Bill Clinton out and did CPR on him and saved his life. And Bill said, wow, you guys saved my life. What can you do for you? And the first boy says, well, I'd, I'd like $100, okay? And the second boy said, well, well, yeah, I'd like $100 too. And the third boy says, well, you know, you can buy me a nice tombstone. And Bill Clinton said, what? Why do you want that? And the, the kid said, well, when my father finds out I saved you, he's going to kill me. <laughs> And then uh, a young kid was once uh, talking to his father, and he said, you know, when I grow up, I want to be a politician. And his father said, well, what are you, crazy? And the kid said, uh, is that required? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, today my guest is going to be Freddie Simpson. She is the Republican Committee Chair for the local area, and she's got another huge, long title that she, I'm not going to go into, but she's a big wig when it comes to the... Republican Party here in town and nationally as well. And she's a good friend of mine, and we're going to have a nice chat. But hey, street talk and other stuff. Mike, Mad Dog, Magnata, you stick around. We'll be right back. Eastern Washington. It's a great place to call home and a great time to own a home. It's the ideal place to lay down roots for your family and your future. Gisa Credit Union thinks Eastern Washington is a great place to own a home, too. That's why we offer all kinds of home loans with personal attention every step of the way. We're your home. For home loans, we're Gisa Credit Union. This is State Representative Kerry Condotta inviting you to watch our new and improved 12th District 2.0 show. Now featuring more information on federal, state, and local issues in a leaner, faster format. Guests host John Wise and Shiloh Shower bring it all home with yours truly, Kerry Condotta. Why do we call it 2.0? Because just like me, it's the stronger, faster, and lighter version of today's politics. Also available on demand at ncwlife.com. For Prita Mocha with Whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate for Prita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the Mocha for Pitas. A peach Red Bull. Are you raising a grandchild or another relative's child? If so, kinship programs may be available for your family. Kinship care is the full-time care of children by relatives. Kinship care maintains family, cultural, and community ties. It's the oldest form of family preservation and an important safety net for children whose parents are either unable or unwilling to care for them. To learn more about kinship care or to find a support group near you, please contact Aging and Adult Care of Central Washington. Okay, we are back. <laughs> Street talk and other stuff. And I am here, Mike Mad Dog Magnati, that's me. I'm here <laughs> with one of my good friends. Come on, Freddie, shake my hand. Miss Freddie Simpson. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Little, come on, a little love, a little love. There we go. <laughs> Freddie and I have known each other for a long time. We're good friends, but she is here today because she wants to yell at me. <laughs> And that's good, but hey, but before we get in sure. to the nitty gritty, sure. okay, 
tell people a little bit about yourself. You know, um, anything you want. Go ahead. They wanted to get to know you a little bit. So, so I am the uh, Chelan County Republican chairwoman. Right. I have been off and on for 10 years. I'm not running for re-election uh, in January. I am also the president of the Chelan Douglas Republican Women. Mm -hmm. And I am one of three people in Washington State that represents all Republicans in Washington State to the Republican National Committee. So mm -hmm. I'm the Republican National Committee woman. Okay. And so every state has three people, the chair, the National Committee man, National Committee woman, and I'm the committee woman. Yeah. Um, I try to help as many campaigns as I can. I try to educate people on the differences between Republicans and Democrats, so-called <laughs> independents. People don't, Joe Mokes. people don't already know. Okay, all right, sorry. Joe Mokes. Um, you know, try to try. She's gonna light into me. <laughs> um, so I try my my. Um, I, I do a lot of things that I help in different campaigns and, and right. do whatever I can. I actually go out and put up big signs yeah. that, you know, I get ants all but over you, me. But, I mean, so. you are, you're a big time in the Republican Party. I mean, you've been to national conventions, right? Yes. Okay, And cool. to the White House. Yeah. Who'd White House met? Christmas parties. Really? Who'd you met? Who'd, who have you met? Uh, President George W. Bush. Did you really? Uh, I'd like to, four, I would like to times, meet him. Four times. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful man. Yeah, regardless of what you, anybody thinks of a president, he's he a, is he quite a wonderful guy. Wonderful man. Yeah, he and yeah, his the wife. The whole family, whole yeah. family, wonderful, generous people. Um, and then a, a lot of people that surrounded him, right. you know, with his daughters and everybody. <coughs> and of course, uh, uh, I've met President Trump. You a have met? Of times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. How did you like him? Well, you know, I, I have, let me be honest with you. He wasn't my first, fifth, tenth, or fifteenth choice. <laughs> <laughs> we have an honest woman here, ladies and gentlemen. So, okay. But um, I was at a rally. I was invited by our, our national chair at the time, Rex yeah. Priebus, to attend a rally and go to a VIP reception and meet him and Jeff Sessions and Rudy Giuliani and several okay. of them. And uh, normally you go through the line to get your picture taken. Sure. And it's like this uh, cattle call. You know, you go, yeah, you have yeah. your, shake your hand, and <coughs> next, you know, it's like that. So I was introduced as the National Committee woman, and he took my hand, mm -hmm. and he put it like this, and he said, can I win this state? Oh, and he was Washington? very interested yeah. in what me, right. what I had to say. Yeah. And we stood and talked for, I don't know, four or five minutes, which oh, is really? unheard of. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <coughs> but then I asked him, uh, I said, I have a personal question for you. And he said, what's that? And I said, is your wife your calm? Mm -hmm. Okay. And he looked at me and he said, what do you mean? I said, well, everybody, now, this is during the campaign. Yeah, yeah. I said, everybody has to be tugging and pulling and wanting your time and right. wanting you here and there. When you go home, is she your calm? Does she bring you calm? And he said, you know, Freddie, I've never thought of it that way, but that's exactly what she does. Oh, really? Well. And the time, that time man. that he spent with me, that yeah. the honest answer, <coughs> and then the couple of times that I met him, I got to sing to him, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, What'd you sing? Well, I, I, uh, <coughs> I, we were doing a question and answers, yeah. this is last January, and I uh, raised my hand and I said, got the microphone, and I said, uh, you know, Mr. President, I said, uh, during the world's the 2016 World Series, the commentators gave the Cubs as much chance of winning the World Series as they gave you <laughs> winning the of winning the presidency. Right, yeah. And he said, "Yes, yeah, yes, yes." Yeah. And I said, "But you know, I was such, I'm such a Cubs mm -hmm. fan." And I said, "And on when they won that night, I was standing in my living room and I'm singing along, go Cubs, go!" <laughs> and I sing the whole song. Yeah. And I said, "But Mr. President, that song kept ringing through my head." And I said, and on election night, I was at a victory party in, in, in Seattle, and I called the race at 10 o'clock that night. Nobody mm -hmm. else had called the race. Mm. But I was looking at our data, our stats. I knew we were going to win certain states, and I knew you were going to win. And I, I was called up on stage. I said, I don't want to go on stage. They said, get up on stage. And so I taught everybody my new song. <laughs> And instead of Go Cubs Go, I said, Go Trump Go. <laughs> and I got everybody yeah. singing the song. Yeah. And the president just laughed. He was, he was like you know, this. And he yeah, was yeah, very, cool. genu genu very, cool. very generous. Cool. Yeah, so. Okay. Now. Now. Why did you invite yourself on my show? I mean, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I, you, you're, 
you're actually in good company because yeah. anybody who has a platform of television, radio, you do things for the ratings. Sure. Well, yeah, I and want people. Is, to, I want the people to watch the show. Sure. This yeah. is Fox News. This is CNN. Right. This yeah. is. You know, people complain about CNN. They're so liberal. So they have four liberal on the panelists and one mm -hmm. conservative. Fox News has four conservatives <coughs> sure. and one liberal. I mean, it's, it's you know, they, yeah. that's just who it is. And unfortunately, I have chastised Judge Janine. I've mm -hmm. chastised Lou Dobbs. Mm -hmm. Be, so you're in good company okay. when I chastise <laughs> you. Just, just to kind of oh, let you I know. I feel so important now. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <laughs> Because uh, they do things to get ratings. And I'll give you an example. Judge Janine, in uh, 2016, yeah. um, started telling everybody on her show that the big, bad Republican Party was going to change the rules at our next meeting to right. stop the president from right. getting the nomination, or Trump from getting the nomination. Every news agency in the world showed up. We had a reception Friday night. They followed us. They had helicopters. They had drones. Yeah. We couldn't do, we couldn't go to the bathroom pretty much yeah. without them trying to follow <laughs> us in. And when we got to the rules committee, nothing happened yeah. because we couldn't change the rules. It's part of our rules. Right. You, the, you could, like we just, we just did all the changing we can do at this last meeting we had last month. No more changes okay, until okay. the 2020 right. e election. So she gets everybody all up in arms and the big bad Republicans. So I get just as angry <laughs> at them. But when you call somebody who's <laughs> running for office a jamoke, <laughs> you run for office and tell me if you're a okay. jamoke. Because you put your own money, you dig your own holes to put, to put those, those four <laughs> by eights in. You do all, you spend okay. all your own money right. unless you're raising a ton of money. Can I tell people what I did? Sure. Okay. Sure. Uh, which I I'm not right defending here. myself. I'm going to say, I'm going to just explain what I did. There was a candidate who s was pretty much announcing himself as the next winner of the election. Okay. And I said, yeah, we got this jamoke on now, and you got to be from the East Coast to know what jamoke means. <laughs> I'm not from the East Coast, but I know what a jamoke okay, is. Right. <laughs> and it's not real complimentary. I said, jamoke, some jamoke has already announced himself the winner of this election, which I think is a little bit arrogant, and why should I vote for somebody who's already declared himself the winner? You and some other people took offense at that. So Well, because, so, because that shows confidence in anything you do. It's like when we introduce... Mm -hmm. Dino Rossi, right now, the next U.S. congressman. Right, right. When we introduce Susan Hutchison, the next U.S. senator. When th this is how you develop confidence in people. And when you say you're next commissioner, and not it's, a co it's a confidence. Not builder. everybody sees it that way, though. Well, then you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I want to hear that I'm wrong, I will go home. <laughs> okay. Talk to Rosie. <laughs> talk, to talk to Rosie. Yes. Actually, no. My wife loves me very much, and she holds me accountable. She doesn't tell me. I'm so wrong. I, so I okay. wrote back. I said, no, I love it when I hear about someone complaining about some jamoke <laughs> who has put their life on hold to run for public office, spend their own money, time and money, twenty four seven, only to be criticized by someone on Facebook or behind a microphone. But I did say, just my humble opinion. Yes. And that's then you yeah, and then yeah. you're. Your attack dogs, oh, I'll bet Freddie No, Eddie wait a minute. Play. They're not my attack they're dogs. They're your attack dogs. No, they're not. They're yes. people who come. Because you don't chastise them. I don't necessarily think I should chastise them. I don't. Uh, look, we're posting on social media. Which means social, which is supposed to be nice. Okay, so oh, I'm nice. supposed to be a referee. Yes, it's your post. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I want to ask you a question. <laughs> I want to ask you a question, okay, all right? Good. Now, let's say the per now I had no idea what political party this guy was a part of, and that is the truth. Okay, okay, that's fair. Okay, that's fair. I had no idea. Now, had he been a Democrat, would you have come back and said the same thing to me? Probably not. No. <laughs> In all fairness, you're right. Okay. You are right. All right. And but see, I that's, might have still I'm, said Jamoke. I might still have said, I guess I, guess I understand how much time... <laughs> These candidates. I was up putting up signs, these four by eight signs, this last couple of months in sure. the smoke. So my, you know, chest is all yeah. full of smoke and stuff. Um, we were up on a on a hill putting in. I found the perfect spot for one of the legs of the sign to go in, and I had to kick out this uh, log. And when I did, all these ants, black ants, came up my leg. Uh, and so, I mean, uh, this is the kind of stuff we sure. put up. We do. Um, and we're not paid to do this. Right, I understand. And so that. when so when somebody 
chastises for an ad. Now, you have every right, but like I said, just my humble opinion, and okay. I did put a smiley face. Yes, you did, and you have every right to come back and chastise me for it. Right, That's right, okay. Right. Okay, but another person who I don't know anywhere near as well as you, but I, I like and respect, sure. got a little bit... Testy. Yeah, and I came back and I said exactly what I said to you. I said, come on, give me a break. If I had said this to a Democrat... Right. I mean, all right, but then... What would they have said? Yeah, or but now, now there's, there's something else I want to ask, okay? Sure, sure. This is America, sure. okay? These people want to be public servants. Sure. What gets me a little bit is sometimes when you get into politics, the higher you go up, you expect, okay, yeah, I don't disregard that people should have respect, but I have seen the way Congress people have talked to people like me. I've seen the way Senate, and I'm going, my God, you guys are public servants. You don't have any right to diss me just because I'm not at the same level you are. Correct. And this is America, all right? So, now I hear what you're saying, I took it to heart, and I will keep it in mind next time I want to call a Republican a Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but hey, we're gonna take a break, all okay, right? Because right. I wanted to get that out, you know? But this is, I like this, this woman and I can disagree, and she can call me to account, and we still like each other. Well, that's what, that's what you're supposed to be able you to know, do. You know, yeah, I mean, and there's no nasty. Unfor unfortunately, we have gotten to such a point where my husband and I were at a restaurant last night and two women that I know who they are and they've got the resist bumper stickers. They were seated sure. at a table next to us and they and asked to be what is, what is the resist bumper stickers mean? I don't that's know what... That's the, the resist uh, everything Trump wants oh, to okay. do. Oh, okay. All right. Well, so see, that's resist, how resist political na politically naive I am. I didn't even know but that. But they asked to be uh, put into a different And I'm sorry. Section, that so. is... But, th but this is how bad this has gotten. We, c we no longer... That's shameful to yes, me. Yes, yes. So we no longer can have an open dialogue right. and a difference of opinion. Right. And like I told you, uh, do we have time for this? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I told got, you, you know. if anybody thinks that our founding fathers didn't get along, right. they, oh, have no was, they have no idea what they're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they vehemently didn't like each other. They didn't like each them, other. Yeah. In fact, they went to Delaware. The Rodney, uh, I forgot his name. He was one of the delegates from, from uh, Delaware. Mm -hmm. And he was dying. And he went home to die. Right. And they needed a hundred. They needed a unanimous decision to pass the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence started out. I've heard anywhere from ten to fifteen pages. By the time take that out, take that out, do this, add right, this, right. it ended up in the what we ne what we now have. So there was what? Oh my gosh, Mike! They compromised. The big C word, compromised. And they needed Delaware, and so they needed at least two of the three delegates from Del Delaware to approve this right. in order for it to pass. They rode their horse and buggy all the way back to grab this dying man to bring him back mm -hmm. to vote in favor of this to get the, the, de the Declaration of Independence passed. Yeah. So open dialogue is always good and should be welcome. It's necessary, okay? It very much is. And mutual respect, even if you disagree with somebody. Okay, well, I'm going to cut you off there because sure, I sure. want to give you enough time to talk about the other, <laughs> the other topic <laughs> that Freddie wants to talk about. So, hey, street talk and other stuff. Mike, Mad Dog Magnetti, I'm talking with a good friend of mine, Freddie Simpson. She is the Republican woman here locally. <laughs> so, so you stick <laughs> around. We'll be right back. All right. Hey everyone, Fletcher and Amy Ellington here from Live It Up. In the investment world, ROI stands for Return on Investment. Well, how does better health, better wealth, and better relationships sound for ROI? Join us every week right here on NCW Life and learn how to invest in the most important asset, you. We're gonna answer your questions and provide some weekly inspiration so you can create a life that you love. Join us on Live It Up. Hello, Wenatchee Valley. Christian Chandler here with Bay Equity Home Loans. Let us make your dream of home ownership a reality. We're here to guide you through the loan process every step of the way. Check out our convenient online application. Bay Equity Home Loans in Wenatchee, your home for loans. Stop on by or give us a call today. Just as we went on the air, Steve, NCW Life is live now on Facebook. Hey, how is about that? We're live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I'm Dan Koontz, your host for the next hour. Every weekday, 
starting at 7 o'clock. Get ready for a bunch of news that's coming your way. This is what's happening around North Central Washington. We'll have a rundown of all your local, regional, and statewide news. You can also find more on our website at ncwlife.com. Follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook. That's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley on NCW Life News. Tacos Chava has something new. Customers at Tacos Chava say it's the best Mexican food around. Nachos, enchiladas, tortas, ensaladas. And introducing camarones in many styles. You'll love the fresh salsa bar with so much selection. Are you ready for Tacos Chava? Find them at two great locations, the Wenatchee Valley Mall and ENIAC. Tacos Chava, tan delicioso. All right, street talk and other stuff. Mike Mad Dog Magnani, I'm talking with Freddie Simpson. And Freddie, you asked. <laughs> <laughs> so there was another thing you wanted to discuss today when you came on the show. So why so, don't you, uh, yeah, why don't you so, go there? Why don't you go there? <laughs> so I don't, you know, it might be a naivety for people who run for office. Mm -hmm. They run as independents or they run as no party preference. Right. When we have all the data on how you voted. Sure. So, so one particular candidate, candidate okay. we know for a fact, voted Democrat in the 2008, 12, and 16 presidential primary. We right. don't know how they vote, but we know they voted Democrat. Right. Um, when you drive through Wenatchee or Chelan County and you see signs for certain people in every known Democrat yard, right. but none in okay. a Republican yard, Pretty much gives you an idea. Okay. We we have more data on more voters than you can imagine. Sure. And so we so th so the idea that um, somebody wants to run as an independent that and thinking that somehow we're going to buy it right. as Republicans it isn't going to happen. Okay. So why does somebody do that? Why does somebody? Why don't well, they just stand up and say I'm a Democrat or a Republican? Why are they claiming to be independent? Okay, I mean, I know I, the I answer, but I, I want you to share. I can't share. tell. I can't tell you on <clears throat> this specific one. Sure. But I will tell you. Back in 2012, there was a well-known, uh, beloved Democrat leader of our community who mm -hmm. ran for county commissioner, and the Democrat Party yeah. at the time told him he couldn't win as a Democrat, so they wanted him to run as an independent. Right. It kind of masks who you are. Sure. It doesn't mask who you are. Right. We know exactly who you are. Mm -hmm. But he refused. And God bless him, he lost. But you know what? He ran, he stood his ground, he ran as a Democrat. He didn't try to mask who he is. Yeah. And so we have uh, a specific uh, candidate right now running as an independent, not the no party preference, because that's a whole right. different animal. That's based, no party preference is usually what judges pick, right? Or something? Or no, judges run as uh, nonpartisan. Okay. So they right. don't have to put anything yeah, down. They're, right. they're not, same as city council, they're nonpartisan. Okay. Um, but this candidate is running as uh, a, an independent. Right. But when you look at her endorsements, they're all every liberal group right. out there including one that is the supposed independent, uh, it's a new group that our former uh, uh, Washington State Republican Party chair and another prominent Democrat yeah. have formed this group to start an independent party. What happened is the Libertarians were the last independent party Washington State mm -hmm. had. And they, if for those who don't know, liber Libertarians are actually uh, socially liberal but uh, fiscally conservative. Right. And so, but they're broke. They went broke. They're, right. they're, they're gone. Um, so, so to say you're an independent, to me, just masks who you are because all people have to do is look at who your endorsements okay. are. And when you see all these endorsements from the most liberal mm -hmm. groups and then you look at the hundreds of names and they're every known liberal in Chelan and Douglas County. Okay. Hello? And what are they trying to accomplish by doing this? Okay, fool, what you're saying is that they're the obviously... average voter. Okay, what you're saying is they're obviously Democrat, they have Democrat support, their signs are in Democrat yards, but they're claiming to be independents because they want to look at somebody like me who's somewhat naive and go, oh, Calls people I don't like Republicans or Democrats, so I'm going to vote for the independent. Right. Ah, okay. 
because they don't like the big bad parties. Yeah. You know, <laughs> let me let me let me uh, talk to you about the big bad parties. When somebody has the courage to run as a Republican right. or run as a Democrat, the public has an idea of how they lean. Right. You're giving the public a heads up. And that's partly why you do that, why that's you do identify with one party exactly. or another. So, so now the average voter <coughs> can look at the, the candidate and say, you know what, I don't want somebody that leans this way or I don't want somebody that leans this way. Right. And so you, we, we do all the homework we can to give you that head start when you run as an independent. And Mike, I'm going to tell you what, the saddest part of being in politics, this was the hardest thing for me to learn to accept, is that the average person doesn't do their homework. Right, right. They go by name recognition, mm -hmm. who's been in the longest, they vote for the incumbent most time because that's the name they've seen most sure. of the time. They don't do their homework. They don't do their uh, their their uh, homework on uh, on the bills that they've passed or supported. They expect that person to come and tell them what all the good things they've done instead of you going out and do, yeah, you know, spending some out time. Yeah, yourself. Yeah. And and that is probably the hardest thing for was was the hardest thing for me to learn. Now that I've learned that, then I appreciate people who at least have the courage to put the R, the D, next to their name. Yeah. Uh, the L for <coughs> libertarian. Whatever it is, at least I know I have, I'm have. i giving the voter a head start of, of where I'm leaning. All right. Okay. And you feel, in all honesty, it's disingenuous for a person to declare themselves an independent when they're, when they're really, not. When they're really not. When they're not. Okay. Now, if, and, and I'll <coughs> give you an example on this specific case. We have no independent caucus in Olympia. Okay. Who is this person going to caucus with? And okay, well, to explain, learn what explain the bills are. to me what that. Oh, I see. Okay. I all mean, right. so all the bills, all the bills. Like, if if the Democrats hold the House, right, the Democrats pick what bills go to the floor. Right. Republicans have no say. Right. If the Republicans have the majority, the Republicans pick which which bills okay. go to the floor, and the Democrats have no say. Okay, so if an independent actually gets elected and goes to state representation, you're saying they've got no no pull. No, Is because. Because if they are known as more of a Democrat, the right. Republicans are not going to let them caucus with them because uh, you're not going to give their secrets away. Okay, I see. And if you're uh, known as kind of leaning Republican, the Democrats sure as heck aren't going to okay. let you caucus with them because they're not going to give their secrets so away. So if a person declaring themselves as an independent actually gets elected, they're going to have to declare a side. Gonna sit, they're going to sit there and twiddle their thumbs. Or declare a side. And that, or and align themselves. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So I we have so okay. we have so we have Representative Tim Sheldon who is yeah. runs as a Democrat. The Democrats actually hate him because he caucuses with the Republicans. Mm -hmm. Because Tim actually, uh, nobody knows why he runs as a Democrat because he's really he's quite fiscally responsible and yeah. more more of a, a Republican. Um, but he, he at least runs the way he ran in the beginning. He didn't change parties. Uh, so we, we, I appreciate honesty. Sure. You don't always get that, yeah. you know, from a politician. But by golly, if there is no caucus, so now the very first vote in these races for, to go down to Olympia, their very first vote, are you going to vote for, if again, if the Democrats are in power, are you going to vote for Frank Chop, Or are you get for as House Majority Leader? Right. Or are you going to vote for J.T. Wilcox, right. who is the House Minority Leader? Right, right, okay. And that, how are you going to know which one to vote for? How are you going to know what bills that first week to support if you're not hearing the pros and the cons? Who are you going to caucus okay, with? Okay, but in reality, if someone does get elected as an independent, they are going to align themselves with one side or yes. the other. Okay, all right. Yes. Okay, well, hey, I've done something I've never done before. Okay, we missed the last break. <laughs> But what you said was interesting, and I think it was important to hear, okay? Sure. So, sure. folks out there, you can listen. This woman, agree with her or not, she knows what she's talking about. But hey, street talking other stuff. Mike, Mad Dog, McNutty, Freddy, thank, thank you very you. much for being here. Thank you. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>